YouTube, what's good? It's your boy New Limits, and today we're going to be reacting to two of the biggest known influencers in the Forex space, quote unquote, getting exposed. Now, um, apparently, this guy named Bullseye, you know, he's been exposing people in the Forex industry. I've been keeping up with him for some time on Instagram, and he's been exposing all the gurus, providing receipts, providing evidence, screenshots, all type of things of people faking withdrawals, people making fake identities and all type of crazy stuff and he uploaded a youtube video four months ago exposing q banks and anthony's world and so today we're going to be reacting to that video now mind you i'm going to watch this video with an unbiased opinion um i haven't watched it yet but i just want to let you guys know that these are two people that i actually look up to and two people that actually inspired me on the beginning of my journey um i started trading four years ago and Q Banks was somebody who, you know, immediately caught my attention. I took his course, you know, and he's somebody who just always inspired me. So it'd just be crazy to see him get exposed and to see him, you know, not being legit. So we're just going to watch this with unbiased uh, opinion. I'm going to listen to what Bullseye has to say because Bullseye has been posting very factual things and be providing the receipts and the evidence, like I said, on Instagram and on YouTube. So... When he speaks, I'm listening. He's exposed a few people already, and that's, you know, things are starting to heat up. These people aren't even addressing these allegations. They're just calling him a hater. And so let's just get right into the video. I just will never understand people. Like, this is what I'm saying. Like, out here living, vibing, doing our own fucking thing. Yet, yeah, people want to sit here and hate, talk. Why don't you fucking learn? You know, I learned something a long time ago, and there's one thing. You either play the game or you get played by the game. You either play the game or you get played by the game. You either play the game or you get played by the game. What is up, BFX gang? Welcome to. Mm, you either play the game or you get played by the game. I wonder why he decided to, you know, play that that message over three times over again. What was Anthony's real? What did he mean by that? You play the game. Or you get played by the game. Is he referring to himself? I don't know, but that was a pretty strong, powerful message by Bullseye that him starting out the video with. You know, I don't know what Anthony's role meant by that, but let's just see what Bullseye has to say. Another banger. In today's video, I'm just gonna go over the meat and potatoes of what is going on on the back end of the industry. And before I do, let's roll the intro. Cry no more. There's a business called Red Acre, okay? Red Acre owns 100 plus brokers that are unregulated. Now, these said brokers are owned by the Mortons, Shane Morton and Owen Morton. Red Acre was previously known as Darius Systems. Here's a few unregulated brokers under them. You have KOT, Vital Markets, Thor, and Prosperity. Okay, KOT, Vital Markets. He's saying that there's a bunch of unregulated brokers basically owned by the same people. Okay, and I know for a fact KOT and Vital Markets are two brokers that Q Banks was promoting a couple of years ago when I started coming up trading. He, you know, was posting a lot of stuff from KOT, right? He was posting, he was, you know, the affiliate links and all that type of stuff. So, Shane Morton is friends with Anthony and Q. He was the owner of Hugo's Way. He sold it to a company for over eight plus mm -hmm. figures. The Morton. Hugo's Way. Another broker that was owned by these same people, the Mordens. And he just said that they were friends with uh, Anthony Q. Okay, okay, all right. Then opened Netrios LP, and LP just stands for liquidity provider, in which created a hundred plus affiliation labels. Now, KOT launching big time during the IML days before they rebranded to just IM, they had no idea what was going on behind closed doors. The timing was perfect and it fell into their laps. All right, they blew up based off of default. And yes, KOT is one of the affiliation labels that was produced by Netrios. Anthony and Q were big affiliates and owners of KOT and Vital Markets and had well over 100,000 plus clients. Now, in which they got paid 20% off losses from those same clients and Owen kept 80%. Also, commissions on top from the same client. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let me calm down. No, he's saying that they, hold on, hold on. I got to go back. I got to go back. Had well over 100,000 plus clients. 
now in which they got paid 20% off losses from those same clients and Owen kept 80%. Also commissions on top from the same clients. Now because so they had over 100,000 people sign up for these brokers and he's saying that they're keeping 20% of all of the losses from these traders on these brokers on this platform. Now majority of traders fail number 1. Majority of traders lose money and blow accounts. So if they're keeping 20% of all the losses from all these traders and you know majority of traders are not winning traders. They're making a fucking bag, bro. Now, all right, let's keep hearing what he has to say. Shane knew Anthony and Q had fell into their laps and that's how the opportunity presented itself. And here's a screenshot of Q literally admitting that a this is a brand and a team. Anyone that attacks one of our personal brands is a pure red flag even if that person is on the team that person isn't for us hmm. oh wow okay so this is this is uh my life real quick that's uh i don't even remember his name oh ryan ryan's his name so there was a whole bunch of drama between ryan and q you know uh q made this video about regulated and unregulated brokers you know just giving out information to people and to traders about the difference between regulated and unregulated brokers brokers and then you know q didn't like that so uh, i'm pretty sure they started beefing over that i don't know the exact details of the story like i said i'm trying to be as unbiased as possible i'm only just saying what i know so i know they started beefing after that over that um this man literally has screenshots that's kind of crazy and uh yeah so this is i guess when they started beefing over that video he denied for so many years was actually one of his Anthony and Q then used top tier as the face for vital markets while still telling everyone they didn't own it. And then they lost their medicals license and went to Osprey FX, which is all owned by Red Acre. So they were denying owning or having ownership in KRT and in vital markets, which is kind of crazy. Um... And the Mortons. Now I'm going to show you a video of a fake excuse Q and Anthony gave for why their platform wasn't working. Here we go again, back with another MetaQuotes issue. All right. <laughs> so remember a couple months ago when you went on Apple, Apple Store, you couldn't find MP4, you couldn't find MP5, you couldn't find anything dealing with MetaTrader. It was gone, vanished. So that's like a similar thing happening right now again. So we're having another server issue with Top Tier at the moment where we're starting to figure things out. We are making sure that we are working uh, progressively to give you guys everything that you need. We are working directly with MetaQuotes in order to figure out a solution. But we do want to focus on the fact that we do have a backup option. We do have Trade Locker. We are making sure that everything is going smoothly. We're making sure everyone accounts is made whole. We are making sure that we are doing the right thing for you guys as the customers. And we want to, number one, we show our appreciation and our gratitude for thank you for believing in us and the support, but we do have the solution. Exactly, because Trade Locker, we get it, it's brand new. You might seem very, very uncomfortable about it, but at the same time, like we have to pretty much make a adjustment to certain things because the fact that every other month you're having another medical post issue and that kind of stuff, it gets annoying. So this solution, you won't have that issue anymore. Any single thing that you were doing on MetaTrader, you can still do on Trade Locker, but you're in a system that pretty much can't have those hiccups like MetaPost was having time after time after time again. So we're trying to actually resolve that by, by coming out with another option versus everybody only being so, so dependent on quotes. now you have MetaQuotes, Trade Locker as that option. So when Q was doing his IML stuff and left the company, it was because he knew after being a big affiliate and leaving, he saw a business opportunity with Red Acre, which debunks his whole story about struggling in Forex and making it to the top. He's been a marketer by default since day one until he had capital make the trades he makes in today's time. And since they own the brokers, they can also be marketing accounts appearing to look live, but are just demo accounts. Okay, right now the industry's kryptonite for unregulated brokers is Wiki FX. All right, so he's basically saying that Q has never been a valid trader. I don't know if I agree with that, but what I can say is that well, what he is saying is that he's made most of his money from the losses of traders from you know those brokers, KOT and Vital, which can or cannot be true. I would like to see a little bit more receipts those are those are very strong allegations um i don't know how i feel about that it could be true but i would like to see a little bit more proof um but that is kind of crazy and you know it could or could not make sense so 
let's just continue watching Regulated brokers love that no one is searching them up on that platform, especially if they're as sketchy as Fair Forex, which was a broker owned by Chrissy Jones, who closed everyone's accounts and bought assets with all that money she took. Regulated, however, does promote Wiki. This is because they're actually held accountable for the way they run business. I am unaware of other broker owners or the main labels at other unregulated brokers that I have not listed. What I do know is those brokers have no reserves to pay clients and they're bleeding out. Unregulated doesn't care because they're never going to get an audit since it's unregulated. They never have to show proof of funds, meaning all funds in it is theirs. All right, so what I will say is that there have been a ridiculous amount of people who have been caught faking trades, faking withdrawals, faking, you know, screenshots, payouts, all that type of stuff. MetaTrader is one of the most manipulated platforms there are. You can't even really trust a withdrawal, a screenshot of a withdrawal from from MetaTrader because people who who are owning these brokers, right? They can literally like fake it. Like they can edit this shit, bro. Like Bullseye have al Bullseye has already exposed many people for faking this type of things. You can't really trust MetaTrader withdrawals and anything like that. You know, you if if your if your mentor is not showing bank statements and you know and they're only showing withdrawals from unregulated brokers it's sus the only thing you can really trust is withdrawals from regulated brokers because you cannot manipulate a regulated broker statement you can't do it but for the unregulated brokers you can and so that's what he's saying that's what he's talking about they don't have to prove it they can run off tomorrow and go buy boats and lambos and even an island with that money and nothing would happen to them now the other side of the industry of forex is prop firms let's look at four reasons why the cftc shut down my forex funds firstly my forex funds sold the dream or gave you the expectation as a trader that you could use the firm's money to trade against the liquidity providers essentially the brokers associated they also promised to every client that my forex funds would only make money when you do and that you would share the profits in conclusion, there was never a third party liquidity provider. They themselves were the counterparty to substantially all of the customer's trades. So my Forex funds was making money even when you weren't making money. Secondly, CFTC reported that my Forex funds used pretext to terminate the customer's accounts. Meaning at one point, my Forex funds probably have said to their customers that clients broke some sort of my Forex funds trading rules, whether they did or did not. Thirdly, my Forex funds had misleading commissions charge the account that would reduce the account equity. And lastly, CFTC during their investigation found out that my Forex funds was secretly using specialized software to execute customer orders at a worse price. Now, all of this is true with the whole my Forex fund situation, but there's a little bit more details as well as why they got shut down. Um, well, specifically, my Forex funds got shut down because they were actually you know doing things against the traders they were basically taking money from people and causing people to blow accounts you know manipulating you know uh spreads and all that type of stuff they were not for the traders meta uh my forex funds were doing things in spite of their traders right but there are also a few other reasons why you see prop firms now getting shut down and that's all because of u.s regulations and why you see all the prop firm nonsense that's going on now where uh you know all these uh brokers and prop firms are uh no longer using vendor and that's basically because you know cfds are illegal in the united states you're not supposed to be trading uh you know gold us 30 nasdaq and all those type of stuff and so that's another reason obviously as to why they're doing this and what the customers saw in which effectively reduced the customer's profits and increased the losses on said accounts. These in long story short is why the CFTC decided to freeze the accounts of my Forex funds. Now, you may be asking me, well, Bullseye, what does this mean for the rest of the prop firm industry? What it means now is that in the prop firm industry, the CFTC now has all of them on their radar. That should be understood immediately, which now means it will be harder for the industry to do business and more firms will, in my opinion, end up shut out of the US markets. Now, let's use our heads, right? The situation that happened to MFF was good because if other prop firms were doing these same things, then it would make other prop firms be more honest and tighten up. 
And even if they were, to be honest, at the end of the day, one thing still remains factual. Not one single prop firm currently that exists is regulated, and essentially they're all a Ponzi scheme. Yep, it's true. No prop firms are regulated, and which is why we see more and more prop firms, you know, releasing MetaTrader and going to alternative uh, platforms. And even you've seen a lot, a bunch of uh, prop firms, even you know, stop giving business to U.S. clients. Everything he's saying is true. And this video was made four months ago, and you know, you know. So the rest of the video, he pretty much just goes over even more specific details on, you know, prop firms and, you know, what, you know, more information on, you know, the unregulated and regulated things. But yeah, I would like to see, uh, you know, I've I seen Bullseye is going to come out with a part two of this video and even going even more in depth and exposing even more people with, with more receipts. I've been very much looking forward to that video. He did and do a lot of, uh, put out a lot of good information um, during this video. I would like to, s to see him provide more proof on his allegations towards Q Banks and them. You know, there's a lot of sketchy stuff going on in this industry and just be smart with you got with you guys' money. A lot of people have gotten scammed. A lot of people are continuing to get scammed buying these, you know, weak ass EAs and bots that don't work, buying funding, uh, funding challenges like Paying someone to pass your funding challenge, which is absolutely just stupid to me. How are you going to pay somebody to pass your funding challenge? And if you can't even pass the challenge yourself, what are you going to do with the live account? You know, people getting scammed off of account management, just all type of crazy stuff. You know, he, all of your favorite gurus are pretty much on this guy's radar. And he, like I said, guys, I don't know. So I'm, I'm just looking forward to, you know, him continuing to expose the industry and, and come out with more videos with more evidence. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please be safe with your money and stay tuned for the next one. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Seven six two man, we blasting his whip. Whole lot of blood had to down me a crib. He say he can't breathe cause he tagging his ribs. Caught him outside with